y'all, welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Cocktails, where I am T, your hostess for the evening. The channel name is simply Tanya Renee, though, because that's basically who I am, Tanya Renee. All right, so tonight we will not be having a cocktail. Church announcement number one. Church announcement number two, I'm probably gonna come back this weekend and create a cocktail. However, fear not, we have wine. All right, so we're gonna make a Mediterranean shrimp pasta dish. Very simple, very easy. It will take 20 minutes to cook this dish. Because I'm on camera, it may take a little longer, so just giving you that heads up. If you're gonna make this dish, it should only take you 20 minutes tops, maybe 25. All right, so we have some fresh parsley, our first clipping from the garden, super excited. This is from parsley from the grocery store. She's still cute though. All right, this dish is so simple. You're gonna need a pound of shrimp, some spaghetti, some Parmesan cheese, your basic ingredients for this dish. I'll get to this in a second. And the seasoning is so very simple. Salt, they say kosher salt, I'm using Himalayan pink salt crushed red pepper, dried oregano, fresh tomatoes, some lemon juice, garlic cloves, red onion, and, and white wine. And I'm using Pinot Grigio. So what makes this dish Mediterranean? The fresh tomatoes, the lemon juice, the garlic, and the white wine. That's what makes this dish Mediterranean. The onion is good, it has to go in there. Well, it doesn't have to if you don't like onion, but that's not a part of the whole Mediterranean situation. So we're gonna go ahead and get this food prepped and we're gonna cook and then we are going to dine. But first, let's try the wine. You shouldn't use your wine in your food if you don't know what it tastes like, unless you don't drink wine. But over here, we drink wine, so we're gonna taste it. I love that sound. And I only poured a little bit. Since I'm back to working out and stuff, I'm trying to minimize how much wine I have during the week and just consume basically water and the uh, juices. So, oh gosh, this smells amazing. I hope it tastes good. So this is one of the wines that's from um, my previous wine subscription. Did I say subscription? Yeah, subscription, not prescription, subscription. Um, this is Billings Farms. It's a 2021 Pinot Grigio. Um, yep, what I'm smelling, I smelled peaches and I smelled pears. This says that it has flavors of citrus, which is probably gonna be a lemon, um, pear and nectarine. So I'm picking up peach for sure and pear. All right. Let's see, it doesn't have anything else that I can see because all the other stuff gets small. And uh, it's 12.5% alcohol by volume. And it says that it's enjoyed with fresh fish. We're having shrimp. It's in the seafood family, right? Delicate poultry and creamy pasta. Okay, so we're doing the pasta and the, the seafood situation. All right, let's see. What is, what is this wine giving for? Do they say that? Is that how you say it? Let me just stick to what I say. Let me see what this wine tastes like and smell like. I already told you, I'm picking up the peaches and pears. It smells more limey than lemony. Uh, kind of straw colored, I would say. Yeah, kind of straw colored. Oh, okay. Oh. Definitely getting that citrus. She's a lemon. Very lemony. But on the back of the palate, that's where I get that that peachy flavor that they're saying nectarine. Um It's not bad. Now, is it one that I have to write home about? No, it's not. Is it one that I will buy again? Probably not. Well, number one, I'm no longer in the wine club. But even if I were, I probably would not get this one again. Just because I, I like a dry wine, but this one is a little too citrusy. I, it's, it's something about that, that back end of, um, like now the lemon is overpower, overpowering that stone fruit. 
So it's getting, it's really getting citrusy on my palate. Uh, so I probably would not get this one again out of five glasses. I'm gonna give this one about two and three quarters of a glass of wine. That's what I'm gonna give it. While we cook though, I'll probably sip on it just a little bit. Yeah, it's not too, too bad. But again, ooh, that's what I get for trying to juggle. I need to take the tail, girl, what? I need to take the tails off of the shrimp um, because I don't like serving food that has, serving shrimp when it has tails on it. Because I feel like when you're eating it and you pick it up with your fork, you still gotta end up sticking your hands in it. And because the cheese is gonna be on the top, that's gonna create like a melty, sticky kind of situation. And I don't wanna be touching that, correction, I don't wanna be touching that. And I wouldn't want anyone else to, not at, you know, because of me, the way that I cook it. I have gone to several restaurants and, and ordered a shrimp dish and it came back and it had the tails on it. And um, I did find myself having to peel the tails off because you want that whole shrimp. Look at that, you want the whole shrimp. So, and I know a lot of people don't eat shrimp. These are cleaned and deveined already. I got a piece of shell that's stuck on this. So they are already cleaned and deveined. I just need to cut these tails off. And um, I'm gonna take a little picture of the ingredients before we get started. And like I said, this is not gonna take long at all for us to cook. And you could serve this with a nice fresh salad uh, or, and, not or, and, ooh. I know that bruschetta has like the tomatoes and garlic and stuff on it, but a nice crunchy piece of bruschetta I think would go really nicely alongside. Or even just a nice piece of garlic bread with just a little bit of Parmesan sprinkled on top. Just that added, you know, the savoriness of the Parmesan. So I'm going to re-rinse these shrimp and I'm gonna to get to dicing everything. And then I'm gonna come back, show you everything that has been diced and we're gonna get into cooking this stuff. So y'all stay tuned, when I come back, it's not gonna look like this. It's gonna look like, you know, magic because a whole lot of stuff is gonna be missing. I'll be right back. All right, as you can see, I have put the pasta in the pot and I am now going to just cover it so that it can slowly cook. And we have our pan ready for the shrimp. We're just getting the shrimp all prepared. All right guys, so you saw that the pasta is in the pot. Now let's get down to the ingredients and the measurements. You're gonna use a pound of shrimp, already cleaned, deveined, shelled and everything. We have two Roma tomatoes diced. We have two cloves of garlic diced, or minced actually. Um, one half red onion diced, the zest from one lemon, the juice from one lemon, and a handful of parsley. So all of the ingredients are ready to go. We still have our pasta, I mean our cheese here, and we're gonna use a cup of wine. So now let's get over and put these shrimp in the pan, and we're gonna season it in the pan. We're not even gonna worry about seasoning it in the bowl. And let me give you the, the uh, measurements because y'all know I'm just a shaker because I like to season to taste. But if you wanna follow the recipe to the T, it calls for a teaspoon of dried oregano, a half teaspoon of the crushed red pepper, and um, how much salt does it call for? Salt to taste. In my um, kitchen, we're doing everything to taste. All right, so let's go ahead and bring all of our ingredients over because everything is going to be cooked in the pan and we're going to be layering this recipe. So let's go over to the stove. All right, so you can see that the pan is ready for the shrimp and y'all know I always gotta make a, um, a change. I gotta make a quick alteration. So. The recipe does not actually call for seasoning the shrimp. Who wants bland shrimp? Not me. So I know that the pasta is gonna be well seasoned, um, you know, because of all of the things that we're adding, but I feel like I need to add a little bit of 
razzle dazzle, a little pizzazz to the shrimp. So, and yes, I am adding it in without them, without the grease being piping hot because I want to get them in, get them arranged so that I can um, go ahead and add a little bit of seasoning to them because I'm not really feeling all that crazy about just eating plain shrimp. All right, so we have just a few more shrimp to add and we should be able to get them in without having them overlapping too much. I tried to choose my bigger skillet. Uh, yep, I think we're good. I think we're going to be good. We have one more to add. All right, so we got the shrimp in. Now let's go in with a little bit of seasoning. So, like I said, I'm adding things that are not on the menu, I mean, not in the ingredient list. So we're just gonna add like a little sprinkle of onion powder. And I'm only gonna season one side, just because one side is good. We're gonna add a little bit of garlic powder because it doesn't take much to season and it doesn't really take much to mess up shrimp either, to be honest. And because I'm extra, I'm gonna add some dried dill. Because dill, lemon, and white wine, they go very well together. So we're gonna add some dill and as you can see, the shrimp are starting to cook already. All right, now we're going to add a little bit of white pepper. And like I said, if you have not tried white pepper, I suggest trying it because it really is good. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and flip these because as you know, shrimp don't take long to cook. And we'll go ahead and flip them. And to the other side, since we're not adding all of the extra ingredients, we're going to add a little bit of the oregano and a little bit of the pink salt. Because as you can see, the only thing that I added were the ingredients that um, did not have a salt element. So we're gonna add just a little bit of salt now. And we're just gonna go in with the pink salt. I don't know if y'all can see. I don't know if that light is too bright. Let me see if I turn this light off, if that helps. Mm, not much, but we're gonna add just a little bit of salt. And we're gonna let this cook. And we're gonna turn the eye down on our pasta because we want our pasta to be al dente. We don't want it completely mushy and soft. So let's take a look at our pasta. Looking, looking like pasta be looking. All right. Let's get back over here to our shrimp. And once we take those out, we're gonna put them on a plate and set them to the side. And you can see all that butter and see, and butter actually, and actually I'm using unsalted. I was gonna say, Butter has a lot of salt in it to me, but we're using unsalted butter, so um, either way, it's gonna add flavor to the shrimp. And as you can see, once I flip it over, any of the seasonings that were on one side of the shrimp are now in that butter sauce. So we're just gonna flip these over a little bit and let them dance a little bit in that butter sauce. All right, let's flip them. And you can, as you can see, remember I just told y'all that what we put on the one side of the shrimp was gonna end up transferring to the other side. So we're good money right here. Good money. And you don't wanna overcook them. So now that they are pink, we're gonna go ahead and take those out. Try to hang out in the swimming pool a little bit longer. I wish my lighting wasn't off. I gotta figure out my lighting situation. Come on, girl, get up in here. 
um, because I don't I really would like the color to be better so that you can actually see that they're more pink well right now what I'm seeing on my end they don't look super pink they look more white so I need to work on the lighting all right now as you can see the shrimp are done there's still some a little bit of butter and oil in the pan next we're going to add our garlic This is the fresh minced garlic. I actually used my mixer this time instead of dicing it. And y'all know garlic cooks very fast. So I'm gonna add our onion. And I'm gonna change my utensil. And the recipe says to add a little bit of oil to the pan and I had that butter and oil that was still left in there so it's actually now soaking up into the onions and the garlic I'm not sure if I'm gonna need too much additional oil but I am gonna add a little bit because we want it to cook enough so that we start getting that crunchy you know the little crunchy crispy bits that the onion and garlic will have kind of like this right here. I don't know if you can see that close up. And you know what? We're just going to spray a little bit of oil in. Baby, so can you take me on a date? It's simple. That's what it is. Things you do to make me stay. Not too much. Like you know. Alright, and you know what? For the sake of the recipe, I am actually going to follow the ingredients for the next couple of things. Well, the seasonings anyway, because I follow the ingredients for the, I mean, follow the recipe for the main ingredients. For the seasoning, I was going to do my own thing. But we're going to go ahead and um, add a teaspoon of this dried oregano. Just about a half teaspoon of crushed red pepper. And mine is going to be a heaping teaspoon because I do like a little bit of extra heat. Right. I'm just going to let that cook a little bit. And you can see it's actually getting that crunchiness and sticking to the pan, which is fine because now we're going to add some lemon juice and lemon zest and all of that other goodness. Let that cook. All right, it's ready because my throat is starting to get that little tickle from the heat. Like, I don't know if you noticed that when you cook peppers, spicy things, it makes you want to cough. So now the next thing we're going to add in is the cup of white wine. And for those who are concerned about the wine, the alcohol actually cooks off when you use it. When I first really started cooking, a recipe called for sherry. And I was like, and that was before I started drinking. And I was like, I don't want my food to taste like alcohol. But, you know, the, and this was before you could Google things to find out. So I had to call and find out that, girl, the, the alcohol cooks off. I was like, oh, okay. So now that's my story of cooking with wine. We're going to just let this cook for about a good minute. Now we're going to add juice from one lemon. Stir that up. And then we're going to add the zest. And hopefully I can get it to fall out of this bowl that it's in. Because you know when you zest a lemon, sometimes it gets stuck. Now let's go ahead and add the zest from one lemon. 
quick and easy recipe for Mediterranean shrimp pasta. Before we drain the water from the pasta, we're gonna add some of the pasta water to our base here because pasta water always gives your recipe a little bit more flavor. So now we're gonna drain the water from the pot of pasta and we're gonna introduce the pasta to our mixture. All right, next step is to pour the tomatoes in and add in this parsley. Just stir that up really nicely. Wanna be gentle because you don't wanna bruise your tomatoes and you want your parsley to you know, still be nice and pretty. And I know a lot of people don't like tomatoes, so this recipe can be done without the tomatoes, but with it being a Mediterranean dish, you know, that's why the tomatoes are included. All right, now we're gonna slowly add our pasta in. And you wanna slowly incorporate this to mix all the ingredients. All right, now that the pasta has been added to the pan, you wanna slowly incorporate the tomatoes and all of those other ingredients into the pasta. You wanna marry it all up. Now that that's all mixed up, I think that we've mixed it up pretty good. We're gonna reintroduce the shrimp. And last thing we're gonna add is our lovely Parmesan cheese topping. Parmesan is to your liking, so I'm just gonna shake it to my liking. And there's, there are some chunks in there, but I'm not worried about that. It's gonna all melt down. <clears throat> now that everything is all mixed up and incorporated, let's just grab some and for a bowl so that we can have some dinner now. All right, so here we are. We have our wine. Mm. I wanted to leave the pasta on screen. Ooh, ooh, making a mess, making a mess. Now let's try this pasta. But first we're gonna say our little blessing here. All right, let's dig in. Y'all go ahead and get a bite. Go ahead, get a bite. Okay. Oh, you can't have any? What you think? I know you're allergic to shrimp. But what'd you think? You like it? Okay, now my turn. Let me go get another fork. Ooh, I got another fork. Mmm. <laughs> That's so good. That cheese? excellent the seasoning perfection i'm glad that i went with my gut and seasoned the shrimp because i can taste the dill i can taste the parsley i can taste everything the peppers mm. and the pasta is perfectly cooked it is al dente which is how i like it mm -hmm. tomatoes are nice and still firm they're not mushy Mm. This is good. Where is Rosie off the Jeffersons? The, I mean the Jeffersons. Off the Jetsons. I need her to come clean my kitchen. Cause I done made a mess. The kitchen was clean. Not so much anymore. Mm. And the back of my knee is throbbing. It's going just like this. So I'm gonna hurry up, get off of this knee. First, I'm gonna take another little bite. Oh, so easy and so good. You could also do this with chicken, turkey, a nice thick piece of codfish that you can cut into pieces that won't completely flake up. It will work well with that. I wouldn't do it with salmon. I would do it with a nice thick white fish though. So, from my kitchen to yours, my heart to yours, I wish you love, lots of peace, lots of blessings. 
and lots of support. Y'all have an amazing evening. Talk to you soon.